Today we're testing something that's really divided a lot of the Formula One community aesthetically, which is shark fins and their presence on the modern 2017 Formula One cars. Recently my video explaining shark fins for LMP cars and things like that got quite a view spike, obviously because of the, the interest in what they're actually doing on Formula One cars. And quite a few people gave some kind of odd explanations on there and I kind of looked around on the internet and a lot of people seem to have these sort of weird understandings of how they work. So I figured I'd run some CFD so I can actually show people what's going on and we can also talk about the sort of forces that they produce. So for today's test, we're running a basic Formula One car model. Uh, it's made by Perrin, the company that they allow you to sort of like open source their, their projects. Um, so I took their model and I basically just modeled up a shark fin on it. So I'll put a link for them down in the description. Um, you can see here that we just have a fin and not a fin. And apart from that, it's kind of similar to a 2017 F1 car with obviously quite a few little detailed geometry bits missing here and there. But for the purposes of evaluating what a shark fin does, it's gonna be pretty handy. So I've run cases at two degrees yaw, five degrees yaw, and 10 degrees yaw on a full car model. Now I hope you guys appreciate how much computational time it took to do this because I was burning a lot of the JKF server time. But anyway, we've got some results to discuss. Now, the first thing that I saw a lot of in the comments on the other video was that people saying that I've neglected the effect of the shark fin straightening up flow to the rear wing and improving its performance. But that never really was the intent of the shark fin. In fact, Mercedes in a prior study back in the old shark fin era actually found that in a straight line, the shark fin takes away about 3% of downforce from your rear wing. And sure enough, I found a similar sort of trend. Not as significant, but in a straight line, I found that we were losing about sort of 0.4 of a percent of the rear wing downforce. So the shark fin, even though it was truncated, and Mercedes tested a full shark fin, so the truncated shark fin has less of an effect, we still are losing a little bit of downforce on the rear wing. Once we get into yaw, um, at low degree of yaw, at sort of two degrees, it comes mildly in favor of the shark fin because the shark fin does slightly support the wing end plates from separation and we do kind of end up with a sort of trade-off where um, one side of the shark fin is going to be a sort of reduced speed and the other side's gonna be an increased speed. So people ask a lot about the dirty air and the wakes off the shark fin and that's counteracted by the sort of, I guess, straightening effect, if you will, of the fin itself. There are a lot of people too saying that it was because the wing is lower than the old one. Um, but that's not perhaps the case so much. Um, it was more a rules change, but one of the advantages, and I'll just show you on the model here, of the wing being lower is that if you imagine that we have a vortex coming across the top, with the wing lower, the vortex will go away from the surface of the wing. It won't go onto the top surface. We don't want the vortex from the top surface of the shark fin hitting the top surface of the wing because that's going to reduce our downforce further. Um, so by having a lower wing, yes, to an extent, the shark fin is more effective, but it's not the lower wing that brings about the shark fin's effectiveness. So fundamental point of the shark fin then, as I discussed in the previous video, was the side force. And don't just take my word for it, have a listen to Adrian Newey. Uh, there's basically once the car goes into a corner or if there's a bit of a side wind, then they stabilize the rear. It's like a weather vane effect. Um, so on corner entry, particularly if it's a windy day, they stabilize the rear of the car slightly. Okay, and because these rear wings now are, are, are lower and wider, is there more of a blockage to it and these, these fins and maybe the T-wings that we've seen as well, they're just tidying up the air to the, to the rear wing, is that fair to say? Uh, not so much to the rear wing, as I say, it's, more, it's quite simple and brutal, it's like a weather vane. So obviously a weather vane works by having a, a big fin behind the centre of gravity, or like a tailplane of an aircraft. It's, it's all the same thing, it's trying to get stability at the rear of the car through a big vertical element. So of course I talked a little bit about the side force and of course the side force being one of the dominant reasons for the shark fin being behind the center of gravity shifting the lateral center of pressure rearwards. Um, it's really interesting to see basically how much force the shark fin is contributing and where it's contributing it. So you can look at my other video for more explanation on that but let's have a look at the numbers here. With the fin on we see pretty much across the board, regardless of your angle of attack, sort of about 20% increase in side force in all conditions. So that's a pretty massive increase, but perhaps what's more interesting is how much the rear side force increases. Because that fin is quite rearward at the center of gravity, we're seeing a big increase on the rear side force. So um, we're seeing between 
90 to 100% increase in the rear side force. So we can see, it's like I said before in the other video, we're contributing a lot of side force to the rear end of the car. We're getting that stability, um, turning vane effect, and we're getting a total side force, which is helping us increase our lateral G. Now, if we just wanna have a look at what that would sort of mean in terms of our total lateral G increase, it's not huge because the side force is uh, not great because the shark fin itself is quite small. Um, but we're looking here at say five degrees of yaw into a corner at 300 Ks an hour, so a high speed corner, you're getting an extra 0.05 of the G into the turn, um, which not huge, but you know, it's F1 and they're looking for the tiniest fraction of the second. Um, and this kind of shows you why Mercedes is still not running a shark fin and sort of getting away with it. Um, because perhaps to one extent, maybe their bodywork generates a further rearward center of pressure for side force. Um, but from the other extent, it's not so great an advantage that it's just an all conquering aerodynamic device and everyone has to run it. And to give you a kilogram number on how much the side force is increasing, so you don't go home unhappy that I haven't quoted numbers, at two degrees of your 360 Ks an hour, we're looking at about 25.7 kilos, five degrees of your 54 kilos. So of course the side force is increasing as the yaw angle increases, makes sense. Um, and it means that as the yaw angle increases perhaps to more excessive amounts, it will try to pull the car back into a straighter line. Let's take a quick look though at what it's actually doing to the flow field. So what we've got here is we've got the two degree yaw case at the bottom and the five degree yaw case at the top. At the moment I've colored it by pressure um, and we can have a look at the shark fin on the back. Um, the first thing that we can notice is, and you'll have to have a look at the quite faint amount here. I might actually change the scale so you get a better idea. We can see the vortex running along the top and its pressure effects on the top of the fin. So as the vortex comes over the top, we have that low pressure area. It's far more pronounced in five degree yaw than the two degree yaw. In the two degree yaw, it's still kind of loosely there. You can just loosely see it, but you're just not going to see it to a huge level because we're not at a really massive angle of attack. Now, if we're looking at what's actually causing the total side force in addition to the vortex, if we look on the back end, we can see here, we've got that big low pressure region here at the tail of the shark fin, the truncated area. We're starting to get into the high pressure field of the wing, so we can see that that's starting to increase in pressure. And then when we have a look on the other side, we can see that our pressure is quite high. We're more towards the greeny, yellowy end of the spectrum. So we've got high pressure on one side, low pressure on the other side, we're getting a pressure differential, we're getting a force. So I think that it's really quite obvious how this is working. I'm sure that people are gonna be inclined to think that this is going to produce downforce by the high pressure region on it, but you've got to think of it as a balancing act. When we get into your, um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a high pressure on this side and a low pressure on that side. So yes, you'll get more downforce on that side, and you, but you'll get less downforce on the other side because you're gonna create lift. Um, and then of course people's natural response is going to be, oh, then aren't you going to be producing a rolling torque outwards and loading the wrong tire? Yes, that will produce a rolling torque. Then the shark fin itself produces a rolling torque inwards to load that tire. So in reality, you're not going to see a big difference in your rolling torque from the side force. So you're going to see pretty even loading across the tires. The main thing you're going to see is that side force on the rear fin, and it's going to be improved your stability improved cornering total lateral G. And of course, one of my friends who was working in F1 uh, did confirm this with me as to what they were seeing as the main benefits in the tunnel and in their CFD. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video on the shark fins on Formula One cars. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and check out my other videos for more. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.